telling you, I screwed that up. A lot of people did. But it, a lot of people is not an excuse. Selective fading. I'm not making that mistake again. You hear the Chinese Syn Communist Party talk Synchronous about detector on. And taking Taiwan. Synchronous detector Taiwan. off. Let's talk about what selective fading is, how it happens, and what we can do about it. The facilitation of our media, so they have that opportunity. W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Today, um, if you just heard that little intro piece, we're going to be discussing something called selective fading. And what is selective fading, or what is fading in, in general? And, and I mean, this is all going to be in reference to, uh, to an AM carrier. Suppose you're listening to the AM broadcast band or shortwave bands, but you're in the AM mode. This is where uh, a lot of detriment can happen if you have selective fading. So. Let's talk about the ionosphere for a second. The ionosphere is a reflective and diffractive surface. Uh, it changes with frequency, it changes with time of day, it changes from second to second, and it has large changes. For instance, uh, you know, in a normal uh, day uh, at midnight, 10 meters wouldn't be open, but 160 and 80 would be open. That Those are wide frequency band, frequency change um, changes, selective fading. And while you're listening to a signal, I don't know, let's suppose you're listening to an AM broadcast band, and, I, and I'm picking on the AM broadcast band because this is where the, the problem really is the worst. Um, over the course of a half an hour or something, you'll hear it fade multiple times. And then you'll hear, and, and that's an amplitude shift which changes many frequencies all at once. They all rise up, but they all, all um, fall together. So while all you hear is the signal getting stronger and weaker. But then there's a special occurrence called selective fading. And that fading affects, as we know, uh, in an AM station, you have the carrier, an upper side band, and a lower side band. And the relationship between these two sidebands and this carrier is very important. If there's not enough carrier with a very simple detector like a diode or a standard AM detector that's in many radios, if that carrier relationship between the carrier and the sidebands drops significantly, you'll hear that as distorted audio. And it'll be all puffy and and uh, distorted sounding. And what's happening there is, for whatever reason in the ionosphere, whether it's due to, to phasing or, or um, just fading um, or combination of ground wave and, what'll happen is, if you were to look at that whole signal, you could actually see that fade sweep across in frequencies from the lower sideband to the carrier to the uh, slowly through the upper side band and things moving constantly. The ionosphere is not a mirror. Um, it's it's a well. Some some energy gets reflected, some energy gets refracted or bent, and it doesn't do that uniformly. It can do it very selectively. So, what happens is in the case of selective fading, and it takes sometimes 15, 20, 30 seconds, I've heard, in the AM broadcast band, the phase are typically faster in the shortwave bands. But in the AM broadcast band, it can go into that distortion for 10, 15, 20 seconds, where it's extremely difficult to understand what's going on. So my thought process here was, do I want to sit around all night long with a radio waiting for something to go into selective fading? Or do I want to, to demonstrate this to you to show you what's happening and why it's happening? Or do I want to build <laughs> in typical W1 VLF style? Um, this is a, a selective fading um, <clears throat> simulator circuit that I built. And here's the diagram. 
Okay, I'll just show that right there. I can't really see what's going on, so I, I'm assuming that's somewhere. If not, I'm going to put a picture of it up, um, a PowerPoint, and we'll go through this. Um, but basically what it is, is it's simply a mixer, a power splitter, another power splitter or combiner in this case, and a variable attenuator. And so, and with a switch. So the RF comes in on, on the RF port. The output we're taking from the, it's going to sound a little weird, from the local oscillator port. And the IF port is where we're going to bring our audio in. And with this type of mixer, the carrier, we're going to do this at 10 megahertz. Again, this is a simulator, right? So that we can look at what's happening and then we can turn on uh, the AM detector, the synchronous audio detector, um, and see what kind of magic that, that, that plays, uh, that does for us. Um, back in, uh, Jesus, the 90s somewhere, I bought a Sony ICF 2010. Should have had it right here in front of me. Anyway, it had a synchronous detector or SAM, S-A-M, and it did it in hardware. Now all the software guys, um, and thank God for these guys, have, allow, have built in synchronous audio detectors or um, synchronous AM in, in software, and they've done all the, all the hard work. And, um, hold on a second, is this still? Yeah, we're still modulating. So we just have to press a button. But uh, back in the days when the ICF 2010, it was like magic. It was unbelievable. You could take this distorted signal that was fading like crazy and push the synchronous AM button and the audio was crystal clear again. And not only that, you could roll the, um, the tuning knob slightly up and just, and just listen to one of the side bands or roll it down and listen to the other side band. Um, as we know, both side bands in a, in a well-developed AM carrier have exactly the same information. So really to hear the audio, you just need one of the side bands. And for a detector like a simple diode or simple detector, you need that carrier. Actually, I think you need both. I, that, that's not the purpose of this. But what we're going to be able to do here with um, the selective, what the hell did I call this? The, the W1VLF AM Selective Fading sim, uh, Simulator. You're going to be able to lower the carrier of the, of the, uh, of the um, station that we're listening to. And then from there, um, we'll lower it a couple of dB. We'll lower it, you know, 5, 10 dB. And you'll hear the distortion come in. And then we'll switch to the synchronous audio detector. Um, and you'll, you'll see the profound difference between just listening to it to a simple AM detector and the synchronous detector. So for this, we're going to be using uh, SDR Uno and an SDR Play Duo. Uno, Duo, Duo, whatever. I get mixed up with those sometimes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'll have two displays on the screen and we'll go, we'll go through the whole thing. Um, anyway, right now, I'll run over to the computer do a voiceover on this schematic and show you what's going on here and what I'll be doing. From there, the next step will be over to the, um, the hand bench and I'll show you a little bit of that and, what, and how that's configured and then we'll go from there and I'll actually do the demonstration. All right, so let's... Uh... Okay, here's the setup over here. Our trusty GE radio, or excuse me, Radio Shack radio is going to be outputting audio uh, from an FM station, an FM translator, through the cable into the IF port on the mixer. Here's the RF coming in. Here's the RF going out. And here's what we'll be using. We're going to be doing this experiment at 10 megahertz. The amplitude is going to be plus 7 so that it feeds the mixer at the correct level. Um, the output here is going to go through the attenuator here. So I've got 30 dB of attenuation in before it goes into channel one of the RSP Duo. And here's channel two, excuse me, channel two of the RSP Duo is gonna be coming from my HF antenna. 
so that we can listen to both the AM normal AM band and see it, information like, well, let me sit down. We can see things like the relative amplitude of the carriers, the upper and lower sidebands rather, in relationship to the carrier on the bottom here. And here is the, um, the other channel, which is uh, channel one, with just the mixer running with no audio. So I'm going to uh, fire all this stuff up, show you what's going on here, and then we're gonna we're gonna do some experiments. But first, first I'll go over to the computer and just do a quick voiceover on that template in case anyone is uh, that schematic in case people are interested in uh, you know what's going on here. All right, so catch you there. Okay, so quick explanation of what's going on here in the uh, schematic. Um, again, mini circuits, uh, double balanced mixer, an SBL1, very common, a few dollars a piece. Um, and the, the typical three inputs, RF in, IF out, and local oscillator. The IF and local oscillator um, input are reversed. This allows a all the way down to DC, um, um, the ability for... Um, what am I trying? What am I trying to say? It allows you to to put in a signal all the way down to DC and vary this LO at output at that rate. Okay, so let's see what we have here real quick. Two way splitter, one one side. There's a three dB loss here in the two way splitter. Some attenuation in here because the RF input will not show up on the output. Now it's not perfect but you'll see that there's quite a bit of attenuation through here and then combine it with the output. Now, without these two pieces here, the attenuator and the switch, if we were to modulate this with a one kilohertz tone and this was a perfect mixer, what would we get out? We'd get 10 megahertz and one kilohertz, uh, 10, you know, 10,000, uh, 10 megahertz and, and one kilohertz plus one kilohertz and 10 kilohertz minus one kilohertz. And there would be no carrier, no um, RF generator carrier coming through at all. So essentially what we'd have is a double sideband signal with no carrier. Um, the mixer isn't perfect, so it, some carrier will get through there. But for our purposes, I needed to put this attenuator and switch in. So this is the attenuator that I will be adjusting so that I can lower the carrier in order to, to force the uh, selective fade. All right. So and then this goes off to the receiver through an adjustable pad. I think I have... I think I have 20 or 30 dB in there right now. All right, so I just wanted to let you guys see this up close and give a quick explanation of, of what's going on here. Pardon the intrusion. Um, can I butt in here for a second? Well, I, I guess I can. Um, but you can always blast right through this. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that there's a, a, a lot of folks that watch the videos that aren't actually subscribed. And there's a little zinger right down there in the lower right hand corner of the picture where you can just click on that and subscribe. It's very easy. And um, if you would do it, it would help, it would help me out a lot. I'm sitting around uh, 3,500 subscribers and I'd like to try to get to 5,000 before, uh, <laughs> before I leave this mortal coil. Um, the other thing is, if you feel so inclined, there's a, a super thanks button where you can make a donation to the channel to help me uh, keep building these videos like this. That would be uh, also very much welcomed. Thank you very much, and now back to the programming. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention towards the screen here. So what we're running this evening for this test is the SDR Uno and I have it configured for, and I'll pop open the other one here for very real quick. I have it configured for uh, dual, dual mode. This is the first instance being the master is on 10 megahertz. The second instance, the slave instance dual here is on 610 kilohertz. Now that's a local AM station here. 
And that's what the, the um, Radio Shack receiver over here is receiving. Actually, it's receiving their FM counterpart. So right now I have everything muted, and I want to drop this, this, this instance so that I can show you um, what, else is, what else is going on here. Okay, so right now we have the mixer being driven by, I think that's kind of loud. We have the mixer being driven by the, the RF generator. And the carrier switch is open. So all we have leaking through here is about an S8. Now remember, there's a, a plus 7 dBm going in. So that's a, that's a ton of signal. Plus I have 30 dB of attenuation in up above. But this is what leaks through the mixer. So I'm going to flip the switch. And then put the put the mixer with my um, secondary path here, and we'll see how much isolation is really in that in that splitter. I mean, in that mixer. And so we end up with uh, let's say plus let's just call it to make it easy plus forty. Okay, and we'll we'll unmute this so you can hear the uh, the difference. Let me shut that back off again. All right, so we have horrible quieting, only 25 dB signal to noise ratio here. And when I flip the switch, and now I have my attenuator in place, um, and you can watch this, um, it's an S9 plus 40. I'm gonna start lowering it. Okay, so you can see that that is changing in amplitude. Okay, so I have roughly uh, 20 dB of attenuation there, and I'm gonna turn that back up again all the way up and now we're going to bring in the audio from um, the FM radio here did not to rule on the Iranian claim a major airline is warning summer okay. travel will need to be pulled back because of air traffic controller under let's just pause that flu. for a second look at where those sidebands are the, the highest sideband frequency the New York is area 6 to summer. 10 dB CEO below is about 6 to 10 dB below the peak of the carrier okay uh, there goes my my cell phone beeping away there slap that on mute for the moment okay so now let's take a look at the the real station off the air and see what that looks like pop that open and you'll see about the same thing these peaks are within say 6 to 10 db of the peak of the carrier in the same way here so we'll take a listen to this Up one. Again, I'm Lee Silicera. This is Fox That's News. That's the, the uh, simulator. Now, yeah, granted, there's a little bit more low end on this one. Talk okay. of Connecticut weather. Tonight, there's not So what I'm going to do here is mute this one. And I'm going to open up the, the top one, the top one again, which is the 10 megahertz version. And and I'm going to turn this down. So. Okay, so now let's watch this carrier, not the sidebands. Watch the carrier fade when selective fading takes place in the shortwave bands AM broadcast bands, and the carrier starts to go away. Okay. Sorry, folks. Didn't... Uh, had a little bit of a problem there. Had the music, didn't want to get pinched by YouTube. So let's let's start turning the carrier down. As you can see, those sidebands are right up there. Peak audio of six to ten dB below. Take another listen to it here, real quick. And they rigged it and stole. And by the way, and now this, I don't know what your political affiliations are, but this is the only station that plays just talk and it's the only thing i can use locally here to uh so that whole thing about expressing your views and all that all that crap but anyway let's take take a quick listen an economic collapse a stock market collapse i don't know what it's going to lead to but okay it's not gonna now i'm going to start good. you notice we're in the right am now. detector and i'm going to start lowering this side Trump this uh carrier level me. I'm going to put my and mouse right there so you can watch as I lower it. And I'm turning that I know it's going to lead to a variable 
but it's going to lead to attenuator down. Not and much here we I go. Tell you, because the heat I've got in my now the right ratio now is getting less and less. Let alone New York Democrats is like enough to break the ocean, break the George Washington Bridge in half. The hatred I've got right now, the anger I've got. You know what? Can you imagine? So now what we have, country? if you if look, the carriers here, Obama, and the side gains are actually higher. And this is what happens during selective fading. So let's switch over and see if we have enough carrier for this synchronous detector to launch to. And he read things to put, uh, to try and put Michael Flynn, General Michael Flynn, and switch back again. That doesn't count the fact of three years he was a traitor. Because we're no longer using that carrier to do the actual demodulation. It's not right. It's just not a, there's not enough carrier. And I'll start bringing some back in here. And you can hear the distortion going away. The black population of America and the liberal white population okay. of America. The and as I bring it back down again, this is similar to what's happening when you have a selective fade in the AM broadcast band. Let me turn it down some but more. Republicans and as nice we get people. closer and closer to the where the carrier and the sidebands are the same property. amplitude, so I tend to believe we won't burn the nation down. We start we getting to angry. That selective fading it, sound like that we're all familiar with. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the synchronous audio detector again. Well, now you've got an indicted president of the United States. Okay. You probably just elected and Donald back Trump again to the standard so AM. And you're so mentally insane. Let me, uh, let me so just close. mute that for a second. So, and... Um, so what's going on here is this carrier, which is no longer the right ratio to the sidebands, is not able to help detect the signal that we really want to uh, copy here. And in fact, look at this S meter, or this one rather. That's a little bit more reminiscent of a single sideband transmitter, isn't it? Right? Because it's it's moving up and down with, with signal. I haven't completely deleted the carrier but the carrier now is not high enough to demodulate these sidebands properly now i'm gonna i'm gonna turn the audio back on and then we'll switch I'm back over you know what, oh, a banana republic that's what you've achieved there you go. and you've got us all so angry at this point that we're ready so i'm sure there's revolution. other tests and experiments that could be war. done with this or what i prefer a national divorce Phew. I don't know how much of that I can take. Sorry I had to use that programming material, but that's uh, the only thing that's available. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments if you would. And if you get a chance, please like and subscribe this if it meant something to you. If it, if, you know, it was, was boring, so you could say so as well. Um, if you thought it was uh, interesting or you learned something about what selective fading is and how synchronous detectors work and, and why they're so important and why, uh, you know, they're so helpful, then, uh, you know, leave a comment. And if you really liked it, you could help out the channel by leaving a super thanks. And there's a button below this video to do that. So uh, let's go with it one more time so we can uh, listen to this, <laughs> this, this guy. To my friends moments ago. Okay. So there's there your typical selective fade right there. Jeez, how can I hear that? It sounds so terrible. Let me switch to the selective to the uh, the synchronous detection. To another gal. Perfect. And we know that Georgia wants to indict Donald Trump for election And this, fraud. again, this is perfect, not perfect stable fraud. in the ionosphere. This carrier is moving and up and down and up and down. And so you're constantly going in and out of selective fates. Not as much, maybe not as much as I have here, but you're sliding in and out of it. So using the synchronous detector is, is just a huge deal. I'm going to actually turn this carrier down just a little let me see if I can stretch this out a little bit here and there's the carrier right there let me stretch it bring it down a little bit more about another 5 dB of loss in the carrier and I'm not sure that the uh, synchronous detector will be able to lock on this but let's let's give it a test and we're going to have to make plans to separate. And we're going to yep. have to find a way to do it. Great job, you guys. Software guys are unbelievable. Probably what they just did is they elected 
Actually, some of you guys might prefer to hear it this way. <laughs> so the carrier is actually uh, 6 to 8 dB below the side bands now. And it'll deserve what it gets after 2024 because it will all implode. Anyway, thanks a lot, folks. Very quickly after that. This is W1VLF from the uh, computer bench here signing off. Thanks for watching and 73.